start with, I think the fundamental problem is we simply don't understand that part of the world. And we don't have a comprehensive understanding of what is meaningful to them. And an example of that is um, after, you know, when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait in 2003 and his, uh, massed his million man army on Saudi Arabia's border. And Saudi Arabia is a country that can't really defend itself. Um, so uh, Osama bin Laden came over to talk to the, uh, the Saudi defense minister and he proposed that he would just have Al Qaeda defend Saudi Arabia, which was a couple hundred guys at the time. And uh, they were going to use his father's uh, construction equipment to trench, you know, it was a lunatic idea. And the defense minister said, no, I think I'll turn to America instead. And they did. So half a million American and coalition troops went into Saudi Arabia. Uh, very few of them Muslim, many of them women. Uh, this was in an extremely conservative uh, Islamic country, probably the most conservative. And uh, seeing American women soldiers driving Jeeps and Humvees, this was uh, total revolution in thinking in Saudi Arabia. And many, many very conservative Muslims believe in a hadith, uh, one of the sayings of the Prophet, um, that on his deathbed, the Prophet Muhammad said, let there not be two religions in Arabia. By that, they, they interpret Islam as the only religion that can be represented uh, in Saudi Arabia. This, so having non-believers, having female soldiers in the country was inflammatory to their sensibilities. And we promised to get out as soon as we finished up with Saddam Hussein. We didn't. Uh, the Saudis had given us wonderful bases and great accommodations. There were other American bases in the Persian Gulf that we could have retreated to, but it was just, why bother? You know, the reason why bother is because it was a, a huge talking point among radical Islamists. And um, that became one of the things that ignited Al-Qaeda in its war against the West and especially America.